in my case, I was raised to respect professions and not to judge those that had authority over me being a Southerner. But what I, what I mean by that is I didn't question a person that has his doctorate, whether it's a physician working on my body or a dentist that is, again, trained professional. So, if I had questioned more, perhaps some of the process could have been shortened. But I didn't really get encouraged by the professionals I saw to let them see Delinda and to let them understand that there are things, such as the fact that my, my dad had dentures from the time he was 50. My mother had very soft teeth, soft now. My mother died in 1991. One week before she died, she had a $2,000 dental visit. Now, that tells you there's a history there. Plus the fact being raised in the South, in the 40s and 50s, the first generation in my family to go on to, high, to college and all. But when I was raised, we went to the dentist and we had to have a tooth pulled. I didn't get training like they're getting today with our, with our children. So a lot of things that perhaps would have helped prevent some of this, I never questioned. And they never questioned me. So. There are a lot of things they could have learned, more than even a questionnaire, but a really good, thoughtful questionnaire, not about, do you have diabetes or da-da-da, that's important. What about your family history? What about your sleep patterns? Do you, the thing about bruxism and the grinding of the teeth, yes. By the time I was in my 40s, they mentioned it. No one said this can affect the rest of your dental history. I didn't get, because nobody connected with me enough to go, they'd say, we don't think it's time you put in a night guard to wear at night. I didn't get any real ex ex explanation of this, okay? A lot of this still comes back to Over the years, I had had work, dental work done. I had two bridges, you know. So, but then in the last, I was having the typical, I'd say at 50 teeth, they were fine. I had two bridges, a bridge on either side here. Uh, I had an accident. I was a professional. I had when I was in the United States, in fact, consulting with colleges on effectiveness. The degree of which you do what you say. And you say what you do and then you do what you say. Okay. So I was very comfortable with my life. And I, I had an accident with a horse that was not my fault. And, but someone let off an explosion near the horse and he went berserk. And I landed on rocks and, and lost some brain matter. I had broken bones, etc. that healed. But I thought that the rest of the body, had, the brain had healed, and it didn't over time. And I didn't get professional because I live in a small town. In fact, the doctor that saw me didn't even set some of the broken fingers. I put pops of six on them and fixed them myself. And then he found out three weeks later when I kept saying, he said, what are they for? And I, but I kept trying to go on. And a year and a half later, because my whole family has a history, by the way, of horses, and we love them, we have them to this day. Uh, we went to Jamaica for my son's wedding. We went on another ride with the horses to the ocean. And I'm a photography is my passion, so I'd gone. I stopped to take a picture. When I did, the horse that I was on saw that the others had gone up the hill. 
And that horse turned abruptly. When the horse did, and I tried to recollect, it began to run up the hill. I, we'd been in the rain also, I slid off. My left foot was caught in the stirrup. I fell to the left, the horse is running up the hill bucking, and I'm going up the hill on the ground with my head just being jerked. My daughter was running beside me and, and told me when to pull when the horse finally, anyway, we got out, I got out. Uh, had bruises from the head to the toe. Still thought in my mind that it was just, it was lucky I did at that time didn't break any major bones. However, that was in 2001, I mean 2002, excuse me. And I, so I'd had the first one in 2000, the second 2002. I'd already began to have a lot of trouble with memory before that accident, but in 2002, when it came back, I began to have severe spells where I would uh, be teaching a class in the morning, I'd teach in the afternoon, I'd be looking at the same words and I wouldn't even know if it was my work, what it was. So I began to get on, they put me on medication to try to strengthen the brain, which were stimulants. And I believe in my mind that that, that affected the teeth problems besides the fact that the second accident had knocked the jaw out of place, etc. But I was going to dentist and I began to have more trouble with the teeth breaking on the front. And the dentist that I was seeing, had been seeing, noticed such a change in me, but he didn't know what was going on. He sent me to specialist for specialist. I got no, no follow-up work, no answers, just the bills. And even in 2007, I was sent to talk with the, the college, with the medical college about it at the dental school. But again, they just said you need to, to work on releasing the uh, your inner stress and, and wearing your night guard. Okay. By this time, I'd already spent twenty-five thousand dollars or so on dental things, and I I went to three three other dentists all of which said, we won't touch you. But each time they do four or $500 worth of evaluations and say, I finally found a dentist I thought was gonna help me, I paid $5,000. I got no work after a solid year. Again, I got someone very caring but not trained. And I got mis misinformed that, Mr. Linda, you've gone through all of this, why don't we just pull them all Implants were just, they're coming into fashion, we'll just put some back in and you'll be fine. I did, I wasn't fine. They pulled all the teeth, however, my mouth is so small, it, the denture would never seat well. And so I've gone through another $20,000, $25,000 and another three years of trying to seat dentures and processes and new, and new dentures at 2500 and finally, in, in 09, uh, the dentist that I was seeing after a year said, I am stunned. I am completely stunned. I'll admit it. I don't know what to do. And so that dentist said, the only person in the Southeast that I can recommend is Dr. Mills. And that's the way I got it. This person comes in in the green lab outfit, which I didn't I didn't know this person, never met him, and this person puts their arm around me and leans down and kisses me on the cheek. So I look up, I mean, this is a stranger that I've never met. And the stranger didn't say their name or anything, the stranger said, sweetheart, I want you to relax. You're going to be fine. And he said, I'm going to take care of you. And I'm going to treat you really, I'm going to treat you like what he said was about, you're my sister. And I treat her well. That was my introduction to my new dentist. As, I mean, I'm 50 something years old. I've been told dentists, doctors, never had someone look at me and automatically just look at me as a person. 
been coming for over a year. This is not, I'm not talking to you for a commercial, by the way. You asked me. This is just be honest what has gone on. And there have been good days, there have been bad. But this whole team has, has treated me like family. You know, you can do, you can put up with a lot when you know someone cares about you as an individual. It has been expensive, but it has been no more expensive than any other dentist I went to. In fact, the actual cost of implants were less. Um, the, the, the process, the fact is when I paid a fee, I never worried about coming back in and paying anything else when I was paying for the process. As many times as they needed to see me or Dr. Mills has needed to work with me, it's not an hourly. So I don't I, I know you didn't ask me this about money. But yes, the whole process from eleven years has been expensive. But my goodness, this has been for what I've gotten out of it, the best deal that I've got. And I'm just telling you that as a as a side to this. The process has been lengthy because there were a lot of tech, but I've always been kept informed. And I felt like I could come in here and talk to anybody, tell them about my children or my family, any, anything as we're in passing. And it was a comfort level. So I feel like today I got on a, a red shirt on purpose. I told my husband, I didn't realize. So I got to looking in my closet, and this is a red letter day. And so I put on my red shirt. I, I know when I leave today, the process has taken 11 years, and it has finally come to an end. No one, no, no, beyond a shadow of a doubt, did you technically have the expertise to handle a situation when you look in a mouth and you look on the x-rays and you see a problem. Technically, be sure you got the skills when you lay out the treatment plan. Number two, don't just look at the exhibit, the x-rays, the mouth. Look and ask questions to see if you can get a feel for the individual. Connect with them so that when they're talking to you, they're comfortable enough to tell you the truth. Because all of us, sh uh, we shade things based on our perspective. Okay? To real, and so I would say, do your technical, get your training, be, the, be technically proficient, but don't leave your people skills at home. Don't be afraid to connect. Don't be afraid to ask probing questions about the background of your patient. And fourth, give your patient information in writing before you start a process. One of the most important things I got here, after my first initial observation, taking of x-rays, the whole process to determine where I was, I got a 17-page printout with pictures that they took of my mouth as they were walking out. I got a picture of my x-rays and three possible treatment plans. And even the approximate cost of those treatment plans. That was 15 months ago. So when I went home and I was told to think about it and that there was no guarantee that the reason the three plans are laid out is there are, at that time, there were some options. Later, as we worked out, we knew that the first treatment plan was out. The second treatment plan had good points. The third one might, but my mouth was so different, it became a blend of two and three. It became actually a, a fourth procedure that had to come as Dr. Mills worked and scenes that happened over that time. 
but I was given something to know the extent of which this process was was going to need time. I was I knew that I had a year long process, but I knew we had some benchmarks. And I knew that I was going to understand why things were being done for the first time. So I would say, don't don't be afraid if you've done all that to put it in writing. If you're going to charge it somewhere down the line, let them know up front. Because if they go somewhere else, if you're really a, prompt, a technical proficient dentist, you're licensed, you have all these credentials, you know what the base fees are. You know even what insurance or all things are coming. So when you lay it out there, you're not setting yourself up for them to go to another dentist. No, patients don't take those and show them. Don't be afraid to say, I'm worth this, because these are the skills you need. And then, there are ways. Now, I was able to put mine on credit cards and, and pay it off in my time, because I believe a person's a professional is worthy <coughs> to get paid at the time. That, but never was there any pressure. But I believe you need to have a complete treatment plan when there's extensive needs and the patient needs to know in advance. And then you then you're a team the rest of the time till it's time. And don't be afraid to celebrate. extensive work here. I cannot tell you, even the team implants. Now, one, I've, I've lost two of the first nine that were put in. Not from Dr. They were not Dr. Mills implants. The ones that I even had, they've had to rework some. But I've had so many starts and stops prior to this. Uh, I got it this morning, and I didn't. Even, I wasn't sure. I thought maybe it would be Monday. I didn't know. But when Dr. Leo called and said it was here, and I got started to go in to get ready, that's when I I began to process in my mind that it really was going to happen. And I thought, I want to wear something. What do I want to wear? And I could have put on blue jeans or something. Not that I. I and. I saw this, and there's two reasons. The red is because it's a red letter day. And I need to know that. I do know it. The butterflies, because of my love of nature and my love of freedom and flight, I feel like I'm taking flight again. Because Dr. Mills not only has worked on my map, we've had some really tough discussions about what all this has done with the loss of my identity, having been a professional and, and after the accident. And he has said, I'm going to work with you. You're going to find your passion again. And it has nothing to do with my team. So I am very optimistic, but at the same time, I called my husband on the phone as I'm driving, and I said, I'm Terry. And yet it's not, I'm not scared. I mean, he said, Delinda, you've gone through so much. He said, it's almost like you birthed another child in these last 11 years. And that's very normal. It's expected that you'd be this way. So the reason you don't see me sitting over here nervous or, or excited, I'm excited inside. But I, I feel... I feel like, again, that I have birthed a process today. And when I get through, you probably will see tears, but they're not going to be tears of pain, but joy. And that sounds so ridiculous, you know? But 
when you have worked with somebody like, like I've worked with this team, I'm not afraid to show my emotions. I'm not afraid to be a person. And I'm going to walk out a better person, but I won't be leaving this practice because I've made friends here and, and I've been given inspiration and then I've also been given encouragement to be who I am. That doesn't come. I've never met that in any other practice, okay? So I'm feeling blessed. I guess that's, that's the best word I know. I'm not apprehensive. It will be painful putting them in. I understand that. I can deal with pain because pain is temporary. And this is not a situation where it makes me nervous at all. The outcome, what I'm looking forward to is going to my grandchildren's today. Because like you said, Grandma D, I can't wait to see you again. And that's, that's the way I saw it. Ready to go? Let's do it.